Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about iterators in Rust. Iterators, um, as you may have seen in other programming languages, they're, they're, they are a way that we can tell our language, our compiler, that we want to have some kind of loop or iteration over some data. In Rust, like almost all other language features, for iterators, there are two traits that you need to know about, iterator and the into iterator trait. But first, let's take a look at some code. In here, in this sample, you can see that we can iterate over a simple static array in Rust. This is a um, static i32 integer, the 32-bit integer array with static size of 5, and we can iterate over it and print all the elements. Let's run this test, and you can see that we can um, um, run this test and it prints all the numbers inside this array. So we can iterate over static arrays. This is not something really magical or fancy about it. So let's take a look at another example. In this example, we are going to iterate over a vector. Um, vectors in Rust, they're basically dynamic arrays. They, um, unlike the previous example, vectors does not have a static um, size at compile time, and they can grow as much as we like in runtime. You see, the syntax is almost the same. We have our data, we have our uh, binding to the vector, same as we have the binding to our static array, and then we, ha we have the for loop, and this is exactly the same for loop. You see for i in some data, for some iterable data, we have this, we have the same thing in here, we can print the elements. So again, this is not so fancy or magical about it. There's no magic about it in Rust till now. Now let's take a look at the third test. In the third test, we can see we can iterate over hash maps as well. So this is getting a bit interesting because hash maps are fundamentally different than arrays or vectors. But we can iterate over them and this is logical. Uh, for most of programmers from other languages, they can iterate over, uh, you know, maybe objects or dictionaries or hash maps. So what is causing this same uh, Rust to have the same syntax for arrays, for vectors or hash maps? The same thing these alt these types these three types are doing. Is, it, uh, is implementing the iterator trait and into iter, iterator trait. So let's take a look actually at the iterator trait code itself. If we take a look at iterator, we see it's a trait that it has a type associated with it. It's a way, type association is a way that in Rust, it's like generics, but use is uh, uses, but it's used for different purposes than using the generics. And then we have next method, and this next method is the only thing we need to implement to get our type bec become an iterator. There are other methods in here as well. There's size hint, there's count, there's last, and so many other methods, but they all have default implementations, and we don't need to implement them. We only need to implement next, and we only need to say what is the type that we are going to iterate over. So now we know that vectors, arrays, static arrays, and also hash maps, these three types, they are implementing the iterator trait. Now, let's see how we can implement the iterator trait for our own custom type. So in here, we have a custom type, which is basically a wrapper over a vector of strings. 
it has only a vector inside it and a counter. It's a struct. And we are going to have, uh, we have two methods for this type. We have new, that is basically the constructor. And we have also add, which is, which just adds the value into the vector. But let's take a look at how we implemented the iterator for this type. In Rust, when you want to implement and implement a trait for a type, this is the syntax. You say impl the trait name for what type. As you see, and as you seen in the iterator trait um, definition, we have the associated type and next method. In here, we have the same. We have associated type, which is the string, and also the next method is implemented for this type, for custom iter. Next method gets a reference, a mutable reference to the self, to this type, a reference to this type, and returns an option of that type associated with this trait. So in here, the self item resolves into string. Now what we do is simple. We just try to get the uh, index, which is our counter, from the vector, if it exists, we increase the counter and then return the result. Or if there is none, so there is no data in that index, we just return none. Returning a none from uh, an iterator, an iterator next method, means that this is the end of the loop and Rust knows that it should break the for loop for us. Now let's take a look at how it how it's been used how it's used. So as you can see, we added three names, three strings to this uh, type custom iter, and then we can iterate over them simply by using the same exactly the same syntax for as we have seen for standard types like hash maps, vectors, or static arrays. So this is almost simple, but sometimes when you want to implement, so in our example, this is a really simple implementation of next method. But sometimes, like the example we have, we are just wrapping another iterator in our type because we know that vector is already an iterator. So maybe it's more wise to just... Um, just use the same logic of vector for um, for iteration. Now, let's take it. So, and for this matter, we can use instead of iterator, we can use the trait into iterator, as you can see in here. So, in this example, we have exactly the same type and same methods, but instead of implementing the iterator, we are implementing into iterator into iterator is a bit different than to iterator. Into iterator has two types associated with it. First is the item, like the iterator, it's the type of the uh, type of the object or type of the variable or value that we are iterating over it. And there is also into iter that uh, tells the compiler that what iterator we are going to build. So basically, into iterator is telling Rust compiler how Rust compiler can create another iterator from our type. It means that our type itself is not an iterator, but it can create an iterator from our type. So as you see in the implementation, we specified both the item is a string, like the previous example and also the into iter type is the into iter from vec because we are using a vector so we are using the into iter for uh, which is a into iterator for a vec so the implementation of into iter method is really simple it takes the self it consumes it so it takes the ownership and it creates this type self into iter which we are using vec into iter. So basically, what it, what it is doing 
this part is telling the Rust compiler that when our type is going to be used inside a for loop or anywhere that it is um, need uh, that it needs a iterator, you can create an iterator from our type uh, by calling the vector into iter of it, and it will create an iterator that it is you know, the, that it is basically the iterator of the vector. Now let's take a look at the usage. The, the, the usage is exactly the same. There's no uh, there's no difference between having the into iterator or iterator trait implemented for a type. It gives you the same syntax, but sometimes implementing the iterator is um, better, and sometimes implementing the into iterator is better choice for our implementation. For example, in this example that we have, implementing the into iterator is better because we already have the, all the iteration logic inside the vector and we can just, just use that and we can just tell Rust compiler that I just need this type to be iterable over the vector that I have and vector itself is an iterator. So I can create an iterator from the vector and Rust compilers does that for us. But sometimes we may want to not give the ownership of our type to the for loop to the to another method and we need to use it after after the iteration logic in those situations implementing the iterator is better because iterator next method does not take the ownership it just takes a reference but into iterator takes the ownership of our iteration uh, of our uh, type so it depends on the situation of uh, what trait we implement for our type. So final words. Um, traits are core part of Rust language and are basically the core and the way that most language features are implemented. There are many traits in Rust the standard library, like deref, like default, like, like many things. And understanding how traits work in Rust help us understand the language and the compiler better. If you enjoyed this content, please like, and also for more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and goodbye.